like that, how that's even possible. Well, I have another little clue for you that I think is gonna lead us in a very interesting direction, so I wanna share this with you. It's this book I've been reading called MetaMath by Gregory Chaitin. Now, Chaitin is a research fellow at the Thomas Watson Research Center in Yorktown Heights, New York. So what is Chaitin talking about that's really interesting to us? Basically, and I'm not suggesting necessarily that you, you read this book, but you might want to. It, it has to do with math and math theory, but here's the interesting thing about it. You and I, when we took classes in mathematics in elementary school and in high school, and maybe even, God forbid, in college, we're led to believe that the idea that somehow mathematics and numbers make the universe really precise and understandable. After all, mathematics is behind science, and science gives us this kind of idea that we can understand the universe, right? That we can understand all of it. Eventually, we'll have enough theory and ideas and data to explain how the universe works, how you work, how I work, how things work, and even some of the stranger topics that we look at here on a new crystal mind forum. Well, anyway, what Chayton says is no, that's not true at all. That at the heart of number theory, at the heart of mathematics is incompleteness and randomness. Yes, that when you go just a little bit beyond the type of mathematics that we're familiar with, what you end up, which is something that Kurt Gödel talked about in the 1930s and then a few years later, Alan Turing with his incompleteness theorem as it related to computers. Chaitin shows us that simply extending the theories of Gödel and Turing show us that in essence our universe is not so easily understandable. And he has done this with some of his own mathematics, the Chaitin Omega as it's called, but really you could think of it even simply with things like um, prime numbers where we don't even know what the next prime number is going to be beyond the ones that we've calculated and even in intervals between zero and one, there's an infinite amount of points, right? Which means that it's incomputable. Well, basically what Chaitin is showing us uh, in a very interesting way is that the unknown and the unknowable, it's not something that's way out there, you know, beyond the universe, the universe that we know, beyond the galaxy or our solar system in terms of dark matter and things like that. What Chaitin is saying is that beyond just the simple mathematics that you and I know, um, made up of simple arithmetic functions, that you can find randomness and incomprehensibility, unpredictability, just slightly beyond the very familiar mathematics that we know about. And that is very interesting because if you think about it, when we start with remote viewing, what do we start with? A blank page, and if you use the coordinate system, perhaps some random coordinates, and that leads us to target contact, right? And so, in essence, the unknown and the unknowable is not something way out there. It's not in strange UFOs and weird things that come to us from other places to this very comprehensible, understandable place that we know on Earth. It's not like that at all. What it is, is the unknown is about five inches in front of your face. That's where randomness starts. That's where uncomputability starts. And it really turns the whole scientific way of looking at things on its head. Because it basically shows us that the way we understand the universe and reality is very, what? Subjective. It's based on our point of view that we're bringing to the whole equation, that we're bringing to the table in the first place. And in essence, our perspective is what gives us the apparent order that we see because if we shift our perspective just a little bit, something that is very understandable and knowable from one point of view, if you look at it from another point of view, is completely incomplete. And so basically, the universe is in essence a random system and basically rather than 95% of it being known and maybe 5% being unknown the way science would like to present itself to us, it's actually the other way around. We only understand a tiny little bit of it, maybe the 5% and the rest of it Yo. is made of things like prime numbers and randomness and things like that that we can't even understand. So I, that's just a little bit to get you going here. I'm not going to completely fill it in about where this is going, but I think if you consider this possibility, do a little research into this yourself, you're going to find some very interesting results. So one thing you're probably wondering to yourself, a question you're probably asking is, well, Simeon, if things are so random and incomprehensible and uncomputable, as you say, how come the universe appears to us to be so orderly and 
uh, predictable in a sense and uniform. I mean, it's the same way every day you wake up, it looks the same. Well, the answer to that, if you've read any of the recent literature in neuro neuroscience, you might take a look at that book by DeSalvo called What Makes Your Brain Happy and Why You Should Do the Opposite. It's one book that talks about this, is we have these functions in our conscious mind to create a consistent, ordinary looking world. That's the main job of our brain and our conscious mind is to create this uniformity over whatever is out here in the universe and the world so that we can do the things we need to do, have our needs met and so forth so that there is a level sort of playing field so that we can take some sort of coherent action every day and do what we do. If it didn't appear that way we wouldn't really know how to act and what to do next. So that's really what our conscious mind makes the universe appear as, as if it's very uh, uniform, stable, solid looking. But in reality, that is an illusion. Just because it looks that way doesn't mean it actually is that way. And in fact, that's really what quantum mechanics tells us, is that the universe is in fact made of waves of energy and that it is our perception that gives it the apparent appearance of solidity. So, yes, it does have that uniform, solid appearance, but what science tells us is that that's actually, in fact, an illusion. It's actually a bubbling uh, web or network of energy information, and it's our consciousness that gives us, gives it the appearance of solidity. So that's it for now. Hope you've enjoyed that, and we will talk to you soon.